Hey guys, welcome back. I do first want to start off by apologizing and saying I am sorry for the delay in the uploads. Uh, yeah, I have been quite busy with quite a few things, especially, you know, with regards to my day job and what's been happening there. So if you guys have been following me on Facebook and on Instagram, what I'll do is I'll put the link up here and actually down in the description below uh, where you guys can actually go follow and see exactly what I've been up to what I'm actually doing, you know, with the company that I work for, which is Shield Chemicals. And that is my day job. And an India workshop is everything over and beyond that. Uh, so there's a lot that's been happening there, quite exciting things with regards to detailing. So you're going to want to go check that out. But on today's episode, there's quite a lot that's been going on. And yeah, I've been inundated with uh, car issues. With Hello, darkness, my old friend with my cars with the BMW so I'm going to give you guys some feedback with regards to what's happening to that car uh, today's episode we're looking at the Corsa so we're gonna I'm gonna show you guys exactly what's uh, what's happening there and then also my Volvo I'll also share some information with regards to what's happening what I have done and what needs to happen and what's gonna be uh, you know transpiring and some of the footage you guys will see on the channel so yeah without further ado let's get it started Hey guys, welcome back. So as mentioned, there's quite a lot happening with my cars, uh, but today I'm actually focusing more on my Opel Corsa. So on the Corsa, what's happened is the clutch pedal has actually lost a lot of pressure, well, actually all pressure. Wanted to drive the Corsa and I just felt, wow, there's nothing happening with the pedal. So as mentioned, I started investigating, seeing, you know, what is the issue? And I thought it was a clutch, but I remembered that you know, three weeks prior to me jumping into the car, the, the clutch is working fine. So it can't just be that the clutch, uh, you know, the clutch just gave in the pressure plate or something. Um, and then <clears throat> when I put the, I've got this little, but I mean, you can do it yourself like a, a, a bleeding, self-bleeding brake uh, or clutch kit. And uh, I could see like, you know, there's a lot of air bubbles. Um, the, the fluid wants to pass through, but there's like gaps in between. And I'm like, okay, you know what? There's a lot of air coming in somewhere. Um, when I went underneath, uh, you know, by the pedal, clutch pedal, so there's a lot of fluid, you know, when I put my hand, I could see, you know, there's just fluid running on my hand. So uh, that immediately told me that the master clutch or the master cylinder, which is this over here, you guys can see over there. Ah, you see, there's the leaking. Uh, well, that's just obviously, I don't know what happened on this. It's not supposed to look like this, as you guys can see over there. And um, yeah, so uh, this is just leaking a lot of fluid. And uh, I realized, okay, I need to replace this. So here is the new one. On top of that, uh, the Corsa also, I've replaced the, <laughs> the alternator on it twice. Uh, the first time round, uh, the clutch, um, not the clutch, the alternator was like, you know, it was just working intermittently, then the battery life would come on, then it wouldn't. And I realized, you know, before I get stranded with this thing, and then actually I just, you know, bugger up the, the battery, let me get another one. Phone two shops that didn't have stock, so I said, you know what, let me quickly phone. Uh, there's a place out in Boxburg called Lopig. Uh, they just sell Opal, um, Opal parts and everything. So I, I phoned them up and uh, they had a, they, they had quite a few second hand alternates. So you know what, I'm going to fetch one today. I, I just want to make sure that this car is, is it's running 100%. It was quite a while ago. This, I think this was about maybe eight, nine years ago. Um, bought it, came in the evening, fitted it, worked fine for about six months. Had one also packed up. Uh, what I then did was I took the other one I had removed and that one refurbished and uh, when I refurbished it, it worked fine, but it, it just had this horrible, horrible um, high pitch whining noise. So you guys will hear that. Yeah, that's just not nice. 
I said I would replace it, but you know, I just learned to love with that noise. And uh, what's happened now is that alternator has also started to uh, just, it would, it works, but you have to really rev the crap out of the car. You have to go about 5,000 RPMs and, and above for the battery light to go away. And you can see it's actually charging the battery. Anything under 5,000, you know, at night you, you'd see that the lights would be dim. Um, and then obviously the revs would be high because now the ECU is trying to compensate and build up enough RPM so that the alternator can charge the battery and everything. Um, so I went and bought a, another alternator. My thoughts were to actually, because now I've got another spare alternator, let me refurbish one, but I said, you know what, let me just go buy another one. Um, I bought this from Gold Valve and they didn't have Bosch units, but this is OEM spec. So it's quite a good unit. And you know, in general, Gold Valve really sell quality, quality products. So I've got a lot of faith and confidence that this will last me quite a while and that it also doesn't have that horrid, horrid whining noise. So yeah, this morning I wanted to actually show you guys how I removed this, but um, I just didn't have the opportunity uh, because my <laughs> the battery on the camera was completely dead and I wanted to get started with it. So whilst I got this out, I had the battery of the camera charge. So this is done. I'm going to show you guys. Um, I won't actually be, be able to show you guys how I fit it because there's very little space. Uh, you have to remove the seat if you want to work much more. You can work without the seat, but then you know you have to do some type of contortionist where your back is ah, uh, you know, it's like as you're making an arch with your back and your feet is outside and your head. And I don't want to, you know, uh, do some yoga practice. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm busy removing this. So for, uh, for better um, access, remove the front seat. And then obviously what you then need to do is you need to remove the steering column. Uh, you just, well not remove it, you just loosen it from, uh, from the actual, uh, from the shaft. You get that out the way, then you unscrew the, there's four screws holding the clutch pedal in. That comes off. And then you just obviously, this part here, that uh, clips into the clutch pedal. You know, see, just uh, depress it like this and you can remove it. And then you just, obviously this will, uh, you would have loosened this because it's actually screws um, onto the clutch pedal as well. Um, just be gentle when you take out these pipes here uh, and then that's it, that's your axis. But like I said, I am laying the entire length full so I won't be able to show you guys uh, this just isn't enough space there, but I'll show you guys now what it looks like. Um, and the oh yeah, excuse me for <laughs> the mess. Uh, the Corsa is quite dirty, so yeah, it's not up to MD Workshop uh, standards, but uh, the car will actually get a good clean. One other thing you guys will also see on the Corsa, the headlights uh, will be replaced. I have done a lot of headlight restoration on that car. I've done a lot of demos. That's why the headlights have just. Um, you know, it's got all the headlights have some form of clear coat on, uh, and I have just polished it right through that. And it's just a polycarbonate plastic that's just exposed. So no matter how much I polish it now, again, it will just oxidize. So I didn't manage to go buy new headlights. So, but what I'll do is there'll be another video where I show you guys how I, uh, you know, just put on a ceramic coating on there. And what I recommend when you have a brand new car or you buy brand new headlights, um, do you need to sand? Do you need to polish? Um, and if you do polish, what do you do? Do you do, you do a compound? Do you do an all-in-one? Do you do a light polish? So all of those factors, because I have had a lot of you guys actually reach out to me and ask what do you do in a situation like that? If you buy a brand new car, what would I recommend when you need to redo or you want to protect your headlights? So I'll cover that in another episode. Uh, along with the Corsa, the rear uh, windscreen, as you guys can see, uh, that needs to be replaced. My garden service, unfortunately, they were cutting and a stone ricocheted off and <laughs> it just buggered up the rear windscreen. So that will need to be replaced also very soon. Um, and then my goal was on the course was to actually have it sent through to a good friend of mine and also a colleague of mine uh, to his workshop uh, with regards to having it resprayed because the bonnet and the roof is completely um, oxidized. The clear coat has completely failed. The paint is exposed now. So um, I don't think I'm going to get around to doing it this year. So what I will do is I'll probably just get some wrap, uh, either matte or a um, glossy uh, matte uh, covering on there. Um, uh, a wrap on the bonnet and on the roof. 
just to kind of, you know, um, reduce the, the hearted <laughs> situation with the paint on the car. Um, but yeah, early next year it will go in for full uh, respray. I'll bring you guys in on that. We'll chat to uh, my friend Linton and uh, what we're going to do on the car, how we're going to um, make a few changes. And I've already spoken to him about it, so he knows he's well aware of what I want to do with the car. Then the only other thing as well is, not the only thing, but then I'm also looking for another set of rims. Um, if I could, I'd like to get something that's period correct for when this car came out, because it's a 2003 model. So some type of good looking rim that came out that period. Um, or just another rim that just really goes with the look of the car, it will be 17s. Uh, and then we'll also discuss the suspension and also the interior, because I do want to do the, redo the interior. Um, I do want to send it in. I'm not going to go leather, it will be cloth, but I want to go a nice look. So lots to come on that car. And um, I'd like to hear from you guys what your thoughts are, what your recommendations are. Uh, what would you have me change or what would you suggest I change on that car? That being said, let's quickly get into fitting the alternator. So to get to the alternator is actually not that difficult. Obviously the wheel must come off and then we take off the slacken the tension on the auxiliary uh, tensioner, take the belt off and then the intake the, the throttle body needs to come out, uh, the airbox and everything, that way I can start slackening up um, some of the bolts here. And then there's a few bolts underneath, it comes off, put the new one, refit everything, and then we're good to go. one guys wanted to show you or actually let you guys hear this is the old one and uh, let me just spin it you can hear the whining noise and this is the new one absolutely no noise so besides the camera uh, zooming in out and actually making its own noise as well so yeah. hey guys so it's the following day i managed to put the alternator back in when i ended that video um <laughs> the the drive was there you know what no don't leave it for tomorrow put the alternator back in uh leave everything else for today so I managed to put the alternator back in it actually went in a lot more uh, quicker because you know now you know exactly what you need to do um and i'm pleased to say the noise is completely gone the car is quite uh quite quiet it doesn't however need a service uh so that's going to be the next thing um, i went and bought uh oil spark plugs i've got i uh, bought quite a few um, oil filters they were on promotion i think i bought like five or six uh, so I've got plenty of those there. Uh, what I do need is a new air filter. Um, and then also the nice thing about when, you, you know, when you're working on your car, um, underneath, um, you know, 
attaching the bolt that slides across that secures the bracket onto the alternator from the bottom I saw that there is a coolant pipe um, and it's leaking there and the, you know every now and then I do see a puddle of, of water um, so I do know that one or two of the Welsh plugs are actually starting to give in um, but I can see that most of the water comes from that uh, from that uh, what you call this um, uh, coolant pipe so what I'm going to do on the next video uh, I'm actually gonna put the car on I do have ramps so I'm going to uh, put it on there we'll do the service and then I'll show you guys where the leak is um, and then we'll replace that and then we also will see what else we need to to do underneath I think the CV boot is torn on the right hand side if I'm not mistaken uh, so we'll address that as well but if you guys do like this type of content and if you do like exactly what I'm doing to the course, so like I said, there's a lot that I need to do. Um, and I've showed you guys, you know, the, the, from the headlights to the rear windscreen, uh, to the spray, uh, to the spray job that needs to be done in this car. But I just want to show you guys quickly. <laughs> uh, let's quickly just start the car up. as we said uh, the car does need a service uh, that's why you're hearing some of the like the tepid noise but voila no more whining noises so i'm actually quite happy to hear that um it settled down it started quite nicely uh so i'm just going to quickly just while the seat is out i'm going to quickly just vacuum here. i have actually uh swept you know and loosened up a lot of the dirt that's actually trapped in the carpets one other one other thing let me know if you guys do this i know uh, something that i do once a year with my cars is i actually take the seats out and then i actually get in you know to the, where the you know we just can't normally go with your um you know from vacuuming your, your carpets with the seats in place uh, and that's something that my dad did uh, so when i was you know when i was a, when i was a younger as a child and um, when I got into my teenage years my dad always used to say come 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 like when it's towards the end of the year we're gonna spring clean the car and spring clean meant that we need to take the seats out and where we can we'll take you know some of the panels out you know so we can actually clean there so uh, that stuck with me I do that once a year um, so let me know if you guys do something like that or if there's something from your dad uh, or from your mom uh, if there's something you know with regards to your car uh relationship that you've learned from them that you are just you know you've adopted and it's become part of your way of life as well so that's one thing that i do so <laughs> sort of want to share that with you guys one other thing as well um i actually measured the disc with my vernier um they say that uh you know your disc should be it, when it reaches three to four moles that's uh when you should now replace the disc i actually measured it, it was actually six moles so I still have a little bit of life. I think I do need to change the brake pads. So what I'm going to do is, along with all of this, I'm actually going to, uh, with the service, I'm going to take the wheels off again, uh, replace the, the front brake pads, and um, we'll, my apologies. So we'll have that sorted out as well. Um, I'm going to be trying out another uh, uh, set of pads. It's called a brake shore. Um, it's from our one of our parts here in South Africa. For those of you that uh, reside in Australia, UK, and the USA, uh, so we've got Midas and Autozone. So Autozone, I know in America is quite uh, quite big. Um, one of the other parts stores that we have is something is a company called Gold Wagon. So they sell very uh, uh, premium based products. So quite close and in a lot of respect actually their stuff um, is actually a bit superior to the OEM spec so uh, I'm going to try out that brake shore um, pads so they sell uh, brake discs which are, um, are also known as brake rotors or rot no, not brake rotors just rotors uh, so that is still fine I'm just going to replace the front brake pads um, but yeah that's it for this car and for this episode thank you so much for watching I really appreciate the support guys if you haven't done so, please consider clicking the like button. 
course, if you haven't done so, please consider clicking the subscribe button and then hitting the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of my future uploads. There's a lot of stuff. Like I said, I do apologize for the silence, um, but it's a lot of content, a lot of reviews. Uh, I, I have actually started with the one torture test, so you guys need to stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, so everything from auto detailing um, to mechanics of the cars to car shows, there's a lot of stuff that's coming. So you're not going to want to miss that. But once again, I thank you so much for watching. And up until the next episode, don't just clean that car, let's make it shine.